Okay guys, the last video you saw, I bought the cheapest LS 5.3 on Facebook Marketplace. Today we're gonna tear it apart, see if it's junk. But the first thing that we've got to do is we've got to get the engine crane back out and lift the weight off this engine because, well, too much of the engine is sitting below the pivot point and I can't flip this over. It's because they've got these arms all the way down. So what we're going to do is we're going to loosen everything up and then we're going to get this thing up in the air and readjust so that we can flip it over to be able to take that base pan off and get to those crank bolts. But before we do anything, guys, at the request of Chuck Schultz from the last video, he commented that it would be quite educational and maybe even entertaining to see a leak down test on this engine, which I thought was a great idea. So we're going to grab the leak down tester and make sure that all the valves are good. Uh, that way we probably don't have to rebuild the heads. We're hoping. Thanks, Chuck, for the great idea. Let's go grab that tool and get it done. <music> As you can tell, we got that adjusted up on the engine stand and was able to get it flipped over and proceed to have crap start leaking out of it. So there's that, but now we've got to get it flipped back over so that we can start tearing it apart from the top down. It is top heavy uh, because of the heads. Anyways, before we do all that, we are going to grab that leak down tester. So let me grab that. We'll get the air pumped up and we'll show you what it's meant to do. Before we go any further, guys, if this is your first time tuning into my channel, or if you've been a long time viewer and you just haven't hit that subscribe button that looks like this right here, I encourage you to do so. And the reason for that is you hear all the big YouTubers and everybody saying, please subscribe, please subscribe. Well, it makes a difference because if you're subscribed and you've got the bell notification on, every time I put out a new video, you get notified. If you don't like notifications, you can actually turn those off. But when you open up your YouTube, there's a little bell there shows you that I've uploaded something and I'm on a quest to 100,000 subscribers. We hit 20 and we hit 25 and 30 all within the last month and a half, two months because of a couple of viral videos. And I think that we're going to do 100,000 very, very quickly. Also, if you want your very own old car guy merchandise, t-shirt, hat or hoodie, uh, there's a link down in the description box below. Again, that helps support projects like buying the LS motor and maybe a Suburban and different things that we're gonna be doing to the Chrysler Cordoba. Every time you buy a t-shirt, not only do you support the channel and show your friends, but I get a little bit of a kickback as well. Along with all the tools that we use, there's gonna be a link down in the description box for those to my Amazon affiliate store. You don't pay any more for that. You get the same great deals that Amazon offers, but again, I get a little bit of a kickback. Anyways, the first tool that we're gonna be using is a leak down tester. There is a link down in the description box for that. Let's get these spark plugs out. The first thing that we're gonna notice is these spark plugs are in really good shape. Um, I showed you one of them on the uh, previous video. They all look good, they all look dry and they look like they're burning uh, fairly clean. Uh, we can't tell if they are the proper ones because well, they're painted on. First thing you gotta do when we're doing a leak down test is whichever cylinder that you're testing, you gotta make sure it's on top dead center. Uh, that way, if it is, you know that both valves or all the valves, depending on your engine, are closed. So we're starting here with number one, which would be the driver's side front cylinder on a Chevrolet V8. And uh, we wanna make sure it's on top dead center. So we're gonna spin this around. We're gonna put our thumb over the hole until we feel it start to blow our thumb back and hear it hear the compression and that should be close enough right there i don't know if you can hear that or if you saw the little bit of dust uh, that came out of there but i th think we're at top dead center and how we're going to verify that for sure is because i do have a boroscope i'm going to stick it in there and see if i can see the top of the piston otherwise you can usually take a flashlight and you can kind of shine it in the spark plug hole and you can see the top if it's there it's close enough those valves are likely closed. So if you look in there, you will see the uh, top of the piston, and I'll crank this over so you can see it move up and down. There it goes down, and there it's back up. So a flashlight will do the trick, but because we have a boroscope, we can also tell uh, that it's at the top dead center as well. 
Okay, so with our OTC leak down tool, we're gonna to take the threaded end and thread it into the spark plug. My tool came with a couple of different adapters for different size uh, spark plugs. And you wanna make sure that you get it in there straight and you don't strip out the threads because, well, cast iron, probably not gonna do it, but you wanna make sure it's in there nice and tight and that that O-ring locks into place. Then we've got the actual leakage tester itself. So the way it works is we're gonna put compressed air. Um, we're gonna hook up compressed air into this side and we're gonna hook our hose into this side. What that will do is that will pressurize this device as we crank on the dial here, it will increase the pressure going into the cylinder. This gauge here will tell you how much percentage of leak down it is. Probably on an older engine like this, we're gonna see somewhere between 80 and 90. Anything above that is great. Anything less than that, we may have leak down and we might actually even be able to hear it coming out of either the exhaust port or up here in the intake. So let's get our air hooked up and get this thing filled up with some pressure. Okay, so we'll put this on here and we will crank it up and we wanna see it above 80. Anything less than 80, uh, then there's some significant leak down somewhere, uh, valve seats, uh, piston rings, something like that. But this is gonna tell us. So we're gonna crank the uh, pressure up as far as it'll go. And already I can hear air leaking by in the exhaust valve. But as you can see right here, we're still above 80%. So I'm satisfied that that cylinder leak down on this particular head or this particular cylinder is probably okay. I'm gonna go through and test them all on this side to make sure that this head's good. And that'll determine whether or not we want to have them rebuilt or not. Uh, I haven't come to that conclusion yet, this test, was ultimately what was gonna tell me whether we should or we shouldn't. So let me go through and test those ones too. Cylinder number three is above 80 as well. Cylinder number seven, 90%. Cylinder number seven, also above 90%. So I'm pretty happy with that. I have no doubt that this thing has several hundred thousand miles left in it, or at least another hundred, for as long as I'll own it anyway. And uh, I'm, I'm not gonna worry too much about this particular cylinder head. Off camera, I'm gonna go check the other ones. If I find something that's questionable, I'll be sure to uh, turn the camera on and let you know what's going on. And once again, oh, there we go. And once again, no surprises on this side. Everything come out great. Uh, every cylinder was at least 20% uh, or less loss. Uh, most of them were right around 90. And uh, I'm not too upset about that. In fact, I'm actually quite surprised that this thing is in the condition that it's in. But I'm not surprised because when we opened up the valve covers, uh, we found that everything looked clean and no sludge. Now, it might be a different story once we get down to the base pan, uh, but so far I'm thinking that we made a good purchase. So now what we've got to do is uh, we're gonna start tearing these heads apart, meaning we gotta get the rockers and, the, and that stuff off there. We gotta get that center cover off there and uh, start taking the head bolts out, getting them all bagged up and labeled. Uh, this is a little bit different than a small block Chevy. Uh, so there's different size bolts and stuff that we wanna make sure we know where they go. Um, yeah, so that's the next step is to uh, get these heads taken apart and uh, not sure where to start, but I do think it is in this uh, rocker arm assembly. Uh, we'll start taking these off. Uh, we'll do the same thing to the other side. Then we can get our head bolts off here and then the big ones down along here. Uh, I start tearing into this thing. I guess we've got to get this plate off as well as there's a couple of sensors or something down in here. But yeah, we'll start taking that stuff apart and really diving into this thing uh, like I said, I don't plan on doing a full rebuild. I'm hoping we don't have to send this to the machine shop because then it gets costly. Uh, we are going to flip it upside down. We are gonna pull some caps off of the rod bearings as well as the main bearings, just to see what we got. If we end up looking like the bearings are in fairly good shape, uh, we might go so far as to put new bearings throughout uh, and that way we know we're good. But we don't know until we get there. We are gonna be replacing the cam. So we will be pulling that out. And everyone says you should replace the cam bearings while you're at it. Well, yeah, probably should. I don't have a cam bearing tool. Never done that before. It always goes to a machine shop to do that. I'm sure we can get by that somehow. Anyways, 
Uh, let me get cleaned up here for a bit and we'll go get some bags and a Sharpie so we can start labeling and bagging some of these nuts and bolts and sensors we're taking out. So we've got these things out and there doesn't seem to be any significant wear on the top of those valves. So I don't know how you guys do it when you're uh, trying to keep your rocker arms and all that stuff situated. I just find a piece of cardboard and we'll stick it in there. If you guys do it some way different that might be better than this, go ahead and uh, let me know down in the comment section. So now that those are out, we can come up here and get these, they look like tens maybe, 10 millimeters. We'll get those out and then we can start tackling, we can start tackling the uh, head bolts. I do, on my mag rag. Ha <laughs> ha. You guys don't have a mag rag in your collection? You should. Get a little magnet sewn into this little corner here so that it's basically stuck wherever you are working. You don't have to worry about dropping it on the floor. It's right, right there. Leave a link in the description down below. So, I suppose this will just pop right off here and plaster my boots with oil. <laughs> guess what i just realized i did when i was making these adjustments earlier you guys should have been hollering at me to make sure that when you're putting it on the engine stand you don't have one of your engine bolts in the head. <laughs> it was down here but it was too low this one's okay because that that head there is more forward here so i'm gonna have to take this and put it back down there I don't think it'll fit in that middle hole. Dag nabbit. <laughs> you live and learn, I guess, boys. Anyways, we're, we're gonna get this uh, engine mount thing, this engine stand fixed up, I'll be right back. All right, so we've got that arm moved down here. Hopefully it's enough. This one's kind of pulling up on it, keeping it upright this way. Uh, and you know what? I'm pretty happy and pretty, <laughs> pretty stoked I didn't put the engine crane away because I probably would have been a little bit pissed if I had to jack that thing all the way up again and get those legs out and just to fix the stupid mistake that I didn't even realize I had made. Uh, anyways, let's get that head off now. It's probably glued down there pretty good because of that paint. All right, here comes the mess. Well, that doesn't look too big at all. So there's the uh, pistons. They look and like they're in really good shape. Head gasket still on there. We'll have to get that. Uh, oh, there we go. Get that off that dowel. Head gasket actually looks pretty good. We'll get a light over here. We'll check those cylinder walls. If I remember correctly, I saw some crosshatch. Oh yeah. No marks. No ridge. That one there. I don't know if you can see it on camera or not. Lots of crosshatch in those things. I'm not too worried about this thing at all. And I think we can confirm with those dished pistons, we got a 5.3 again. Another way to, to know 100% is to get the casting number off of the crank and the uh, connecting rods, which we will do when we get there. In the meantime, let's get these lifters pulled out of here and see what kind of condition those are in. And while we've got this off, uh, the heads actually look like they're in decent shape. Apparently they are prone to cracking between the uh, 
valves if they get overheated this one does not look like it is and even the condition altogether of the uh, cylinder head looks uh, looks really good we'll clean all this stuff up but uh, let's get those lifters out of there and take a look at those and make sure that those look good we're not going to be keeping them um, we're probably gonna be upgrading those when we upgrade the cam so if there's no sense in really keeping them in any particular order but I am just so that when we take them out we can kind of go back to them and uh, get a visual on what they look like if there's one particular one that's bad we'll know which cylinder it came from uh, so we'll go from there so I don't lose those I'm gonna screw them right back in here Grab a magnet, pull all those out. No, you're not gonna slide out of there. Okay, well, pliers. Well, that one came out pretty good roller looks really really good almost brand new i don't think we're gonna have anything to worry about with this uh, with this engine everything is looking good the, the oil is very it's quite slippery and slick it's not dark like it's, it's dark but it's not black so yeah i don't think we got anything to worry about uh, with this engine i'm going to carry on taking the rest of this stuff apart on this side and then we'll get over to the uh, dr uh, driver's side and get that head off So once again, no surprises over here. Um, some of these coolant passages on the uh, on the head gasket, I mean, shoot, they're pretty small, you know, and I would suspect that those might be inclined to get plugged up, but there's no, no huge residual grime up in those uh, coolant passages. Pistons again look good. Probably can't see again, but there is cross hatch. There's no irregular wear or marks or scrapes everything looks good let's get those uh, lifters out and again all of those look really really good almost like new virtually no wear the head again no blatant destruction here i think everything uh, everything looks really really good so i think at this point in the video i'm going to call it and say i don't think we're going to find anything wrong from here on out everything on the top end the valve train looks good the heads the rollers um, once we get that uh, timing cover off there, that'll be the big thing. Get the cam out. I don't, again, we, we can see the cam through here and it, it, it all looks good. The only big concern that I would have is the bearings. I'm not going to be surprised if this is a fairly low mileage engine. And when I say low, I'm going to say like 200,000 kilometers or 125,000 miles. It just doesn't show any significant signs of wear. So, I think we lucked out. We got a really good price. We're not done yet. We, like I said, we still got to get this thing flipped over and uh, figure out what's going on uh, on the bottom side, but I'm not going to be surprised at this point. Anyways, I'm going to uh, go grab some lunch when I come back. We'll see if we can get that front pulley off and uh, get the timing cover out and the cam and all that stuff and take a look. All right, back from lunch and uh, belly is full. Next step is to get this pulley off. I'm hoping that that bolt will come out very easily. Then we have to take our puller to try and pull that off so that we can get the timing cover, oil pump, and start working away at those cams and all that stuff in there. Anyways, let's uh, see if uh, that's gonna come off. Fingers crossed that that comes out with no issues.
of those weighted sockets would come in handy. And that's on number three. Something tells me that ain't coming off there. Son of a... Now what? So I guess we just gotta try some heat. took was a little bit of heat and for for everyone that's going to say uh, you're going to ruin your seals and melt your seals by doing that it's fine because we're going to be resealing this engine anyway so now that we've got that out of there um, we're actually going to use part of that bolt to help pull that puller off there i don't know how that pulley i mean i don't know how far it's got to come how much we dare pull, but uh, we're gonna try it. So that seems to be pulling it out. I don't wanna pull on too much, too much of them threads because if we do, you're gonna uh, pull it out as you can tell. There's only that much thread that's folded in there. I don't know how much of this we're gonna be able to get in there to use for sure. I don't think it's gonna go in all the way. No, bottom's out right there. So what we need is something, a big thick piece of metal that'll go in there on that hole to push against. What do we have? Let me go see what I can find. How do you guys do it? How do you guys do it? I mean, we're gonna be reusing, or we're gonna be getting a new one of these bolts anyway. So what if we, what if we cut the head off? Threaded it back in there and then use the cut portion to keep pulling. I think I'm gonna try that. Yeah, and that way we can engage most of our threads and just, yeah, that's, that's what we're gonna do. So that's exactly what we did. Cut that off. Too much off. Now, question is, can we get that threaded in there enough? You know what we should do is we should cut a slot in it for a flathead screwdriver so that we can thread that thing out of there when we're done. <laughs> we're learning, folks, we're learning. Now, let's hope we don't destroy that. Now, we don't have a whole lot of thread left. Hopefully, it's enough to pull that off. our bolt to the point where we couldn't thread it back out. <laughs> That's going. Okay. Now I think we can start by taking those bolts off there. They look like they might be 10 millimeter based on the amount of paint that's on it. 
Anyways, let's get that cover off. Well, that come off pretty good. That seal's a little bit hard. That might be just because it hasn't had oil in it for a while. What kind of shape is that chain in? She's got a little bit of play in her. Anyways, let's get that oil pump off. And again, we get in here and we don't, what we don't see is a whole lot of gunk, pudding, grime, sludge, whatever you want to call it. We just, we don't see that. And let me show you something that tells me this engine has never been apart. Or at least I don't think it's ever had the oil pan off. And that is the factory gasket is still there. Somebody hasn't had this off and just re-siliconed it all up. So I think this is all factory here, except for the blue paint. Anyways, we get these four bolts off here to get the oil pump off because I do want to replace the oil pump while we're in here. And then we'll get the timing gears off and try and get that cam out of there. This is all stuff that I will replace while we're in here. Why not? Uh, it doesn't cost a whole lot for this stuff. So you might as well do it while you're here rather than take a chance on having to do it while it's in the truck or pulling the engine after the fact. Well, from this point here, I do apologize because I hit record and I must have double tapped it and it stopped recording. But we got the timing cover off. We also got the cam gear off and we got the cam pulled out and the cam looks like it's in really good shape. No real signs of bad wear. I mean, I would reuse this again if I wasn't going forced induction or I wasn't b building it up for something else. Inside the oil pan is, uh, we got the oil pan off and inside the oil pan, there's a little bit of sludge in there, but it's not horrible. It's not like all the way up the sides, but again, in really good shape. And telling me that this isn't a super high mileage engine, very, very little signs of staining. Um, I, I don't think we're gonna have any troubles here, but we're about ready to take the windage tray off and get that oil pump out of the way. So we're going to take a look at those uh, rod bearings and crank bearings. Let's go. And if you didn't know, that right there is the uh, O-ring for the pickup that was common to go bad. Uh, they would uh, fail, lose oil pressure, and you know what oil loss of oil pressure does. Anyways, we'll be replacing that. And now we can slide this out of the way, our oil pump, and we might even take that apart. Let's see what kind of shape that's in. And our windage tray, no sludge. Anytime you're tapping your dipstick tube out of the block, be sure to use your old pry bar handle. All right, so now we're into the meat and potatoes of this. And somehow I uh, managed to slice the end of my finger on something. Kleenex and electrical tape does the trick. Anyways, we're going to start at the front and kind of work our way back and take a look at the rod bearings and see what they look like and see if there's any cause for concern there. So uh, we'll start with uh, the two front cylinders and then the next two, next two, next two, and we'll work our way back until we have them all out. And then we'll take our six bolt caps, our main caps, and get those out of the way. Then we'll be able to take the cam or the crank out and check the bearings on those. Again, so far, I'm not surprised. I mean, I am surprised. I'm surprised how good a shape it's in, but no bad surprises. Let's get this thing tore out.
No surprises. None. So everything looks good there as far as the uh, connecting rod bearings go. I'm not concerned. Uh, we will put new ones in. Uh, we're going to go now and tear apart these uh, main caps and uh, do the same thing. We're going to check them, see what kind of shape they're in. And for some reason, they didn't use the same bolt. They got 13 millimeter bolts going down through here, tens through the sides, and I think they're 15s maybe. Uh, these nuts holding those in on the stud. Regardless, uh, we're going to take those out and see if we can uh, determine what kind of shape those main bearings are in. So there's number one. Again, very, very little signs of wear. A little bit right down there. But again, nothing to worry about. Same thing there. Very little signs of wear. Well, I guess that back one's gonna have to wait because that back cover is holding it in place, which means we've gotta get it, get the flywheel off uh, to get any further But So at this point, I gotta give myself a pat on the back because uh, I took a chance on a $500 LS and we could have taken that thing, plunked it in a vehicle, hooked it up and been able to start it up and drive it. I can almost assure you of that. So I guess what we're going to have to do is we are, going to, uh, we are going to order some new rings and bearings, new oil pump, uh, a new timing chain, timing gear set, and a cam, as well as some new uh, push rods. I don't think any of that stuff is going to be terribly expensive. Oh, and uh, um, lifters as well. We'll have to order some new lifters, but n none of this... I keep saying I'm not surprised, but I, I'm surprised by the condition it's in and no surprises on any bad parts or anything that's going to uh, keep us or make us spend uh, a huge amount of money. Like I said, we could have put this in a vehicle and started it right up with no issues, uh, but now we know. And as G.I. Joe used to say back in the 80s, knowing is half the battle. Now we know! And knowing is half the battle because I could have just plunked it in and it could have been fine. But as soon as you go and put forced induction, whether it be turbo, supercharger, pro charger, whatever, uh, all of a sudden you're putting undue stress on it. So that's why we wanted to check everything. Uh, there's, like, there's nothing in there that scares me at all. So this engine is good. So now comes the time for me to uh, clean up all my mess and make sure that all the bolts and nuts and everything get put into the right bags and labeled properly. I won't bore you guys with that. But it's important that you do it because when the time comes to reassemble this, especially if you're unfamiliar with an LS, um, then you're going to know where each of these nuts, bolts, washers, spacers, pans, whatever, uh, where they're going to go and uh, you won't have to worry about uh, forgetting something. Once again, if you guys have not yet please hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed. There's going to be a lot more on this LS build. And hopefully very soon, we'll have a project to put it in. I've been in talks with a seller and I'm sending somebody to go look at it uh, down in uh, Kansas. Put two and two together. It's Grant. Grant's going to go look at this project vehicle for me. Uh, if uh, We'll do a live chat. We'll pick apart, look at everything. And if we can come to a deal, um, then I'll be flying down to Kansas, driving this thing home. Hopefully, uh, I can drag Grant and maybe even John from the Get Up Drive podcast back with me. And 
have one heck of a road trip 2024 back to at least Bangor, Maine, where I can drop those guys so they can fly home. Uh, and then I'll continue the final 90 miles back to Canada. One thing that we did not do was we did not verify the crank uh, casting number. Let's do that now and verify that with the information that I gave you guys last week on that video because it's all, all it was is information I found on the internet. So let's take a look. So if you remember in last week's video, I said, if your crank casting number ends in 216, you have a 5.3. There's your 216. It's official. There's no doubt this is a 5.3. Guys, I hope you're liking this LS teardown. I hope you're gonna stick around for more LS action as well as some more project vehicles we're gonna be working on. Make sure you're tuned in. Stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you guys. God bless. Let's do it again in the next video. Oh, don't forget some merch. Link down below.